Earlier this summer, I flew to New York to go collaborate with my best friend Sam from DIY Huntress. She taught me a few things about epoxy resin pours and we made some really cool DIY wood and epoxy combs. While I was on the East Coast, we decided to head down to Philadelphia to go learn from our buddy Eric Curtis. Eric is an extremely talented classical woodworker and a shop teacher. He offered to teach us how to do something I've wanted to try for years but was too intimidated to give it a shot, hand cut dovetails. So I will say, hmm. just as a warning, oh the, f <laughs> the first <laughs> dovetail no, I box I ever it made, terrible. Uh, it was not great. It wasn't terrible, but it, but it did You're take three days. It took three, this is why days? We're here for three days. This is why we're here for three days. We were like, oh, we're making a box. No problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll bang we'll that out in an hour. <laughs> Good start. Sam, I love you. I'm definitely not qualified enough to teach you how to cut dovetails, but I can share the tips and tricks that I picked up along the way. The first step is to practice before you start cutting your real piece, and I would highly recommend using an inexpensive wood like this basswood that we chose. This was Sam's and my first time ever working with Eric, and I think he was a little unsure about our skills, so he helped us mill and plane down the boards to get started. Eric is probably the best teacher that I've ever learned from, so I'm going to let him give you a few pointers about getting started cutting dovetails. So, for the time being, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark a quarter inch in from the edge. A quarter inch in from the edge. I'm going to take a square, give myself a straight line right there. And that is the top of my dovetail. The next thing I need to do is establish my shoulder. So, the easiest way to do that is to set the depth with the piece of wood. You can do that because it's always going to be different depending on the piece of wood you're using. You can do that with a marking gauge like this. But the other way I do it, I'll show you on the back face, is essentially I just line them up flush with this face. Once I have that line established, I can take my bevel. I can line it up do this in the way you can see. Okay, so because right now you can get confused and cut on the line, cut down the line. Right. So I'm going to mark Axis, yeah. the waist side cool. because I'm always going to cut on the waist side of my line. Just like a power saw. Just like a power saw. It's the exact same thing. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to cut down this line on the waist side and then I'm going to cut down this line on the waist side to my shoulder line. And I have a pencil line on this face that I can cut to and I have that scribe mark on that face that I can cut to from the uh, um, gauge. Right. Cool? Cool. All right. And just starting on that first couple inches. And then once I get the saw line established, then I can just go hog wild. Uh, the other thing is I'm looking at the line that I've made for my dovetail mark, and I'm just matching the angle with the saw. And then I'm just going to go and let the saw do what the saw does. I'm going to start here. Uh, <laughs> so I'll often remove just a little bit of material from that waistline right there just to give my uh, oh, saw sorry. a little place to sit. It's cool. easier, especially when you're trying to get the hang of it. And so again, I have my line on the front and on the back, and I'm just going to go right in my saw mark, down my line. Just clean it up. And the nice thing about the knife wall, if you want to come around here and see this, uh, is you'll actually get a very clear visual representation of where that line is. You see how it is smooth right here before it gets to where the saw mark was? Mm -hmm. So I know there's a little bit of meat there I can remove. Whereas a pencil line is just guesswork and a gauge line is a little bit thick. So that's why I like the knife wall. And my goal is to get the shoulders, I don't worry about the tail, right. get the shoulders perfectly lined up with the edge of the piece of wood. So, so because it, sometimes the tail is too far out. And yeah, yeah. right. You leave, exactly. Right. You leave the tail just a little bit proud a lot of the time. Um, and by a little bit, I mean like a 64th. Because okay. when I started, I was like, yeah, quarter inch. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna put that right up on there. Scribe that line in. Same thing over here. Start on the pull. If this is the first pneumatic datic video that you've seen, welcome! 
I don't usually hand cut dovetails on hardwood. Most of my builds are a lot more basic, like DIY furniture. But I'm always trying new things and experimenting, so stick around and make sure you hit that subscribe button if you like some kind of off the wall and creative ideas. And then it's just a matter of cleaning out the waste, really. And I'm gonna get close to it, but not on my knife wall. And just take out all the ugly stuff. After a very detailed lesson, Eric turned Sam and I loose on a couple of pieces of scrap wood for us to practice on. This is when I picked up my second tip. For many kinds of joinery, creating a knife wall or marking your line with a utility knife instead of a pencil is a lot more accurate, especially if you're going to follow up with a chisel. The first joints that we cut were just single dovetails with an 8 degree angle. When cutting dovetail joinery, you always cut the tails first, then the pins, which are the side that the tails fit into. Working in Eric's shop, I was able to find out another tip. It's important to find the kind of handsaw that works best for you and your particular cutting style. I started with a traditional Western style handsaw, but then you'll see later in the video, I ended up switching to a Japanese pole saw, which I felt like I had a lot more control on. One thing that I was not expecting with these dovetails was the amount of chiseling that was going to be required. I'd say I spent easily twice as much time cleaning up my cuts with chisels as I did actually sawing them. After cutting the tails on both sides of my first block, I switched my attention over to the pins. My next tip when hand cutting dovetails is get comfortable with a coping saw. As you can see, I still need a lot more practice. I pretty much suck at it. Miraculously though, a couple hours later, I was able to have a somewhat successful dovetail joint. It was definitely far from perfect and I was glad that I started with the practice piece. But next, it was time to move on to the real thing. Eric let us pick from his drill worthy wood stash. We had our choice of so many different types of exotic woods, but ultimately he asked me, what is your favorite kind of wood? You should build your box out of that. So I passed on all the spalting and bird's eyes and just went with inexpensive poplar. At this point, Eric must have developed a little bit of confidence in Sam and I, and he let us mill up our own boards. I have to admit, I definitely developed a bad case of table saw envy though. Eric started working on his own dovetail box, so it was time for Sam and I to leave the nest a little bit and start on our own. The next tip I learned is probably the most significant. Be patient. Learning a new skill like cutting dovetails is going to take some time. Don't expect to be an expert right away. I would also highly suggest finding some good tunes to listen to while you work. You're gonna be here for a little while. Dancing is totally optional though.
I mentioned that there was gonna be a lot of chiseling before. With that, you wanna make sure that your chisels are nice and sharp, but you also are going to need chisels in multiple sizes. Getting to do something I love and learning a new skill with my best friend is probably the coolest experience I've ever had. Luckily, Sam and I were working about the same rate, but that brings me to my next tip, which is don't compare your work to others, especially people who've been doing it for a really long time. True, Eric could cut dovetails way faster and way better than I ever could, but I'm sure I have skills that he doesn't either, so it's okay that we're different. It took me about a day and a half to get the pieces cut for my box, but with enough chiseling and finagling, I was finally able to get the pieces dry fit together. Getting those joints lined up on all four sides was so satisfying. Now I had four sides, but a box still needs a top and a bottom. To do so, we went over to the router table to cut quarter inch grooves a little bit in from the top and from the bottom of the side pieces. A quarter inch thick solid wood panel would sit inside of those grooves when it was time to assemble. For the top and bottom, Eric talked me into getting a little fancy. He had a gorgeous piece of gummy cherry wood that he was gonna let me use. After cutting the cherry into top and bottom pieces, I gave it a quick sanding and rounded the corners. Then it was glue up time. A tip that Eric taught me was, especially on your first time, you don't want to choose a glue that sets up too quickly. You want to give yourself a little bit of a longer working time so you have time to get all your pieces in place before they set. As we were working on these projects, I shared some really funny behind the scenes moments that included a little dancing, maybe a little singing, and a lot of really embarrassing stuff. So make sure that you head over to Instagram and follow Pneumatic Daddict so you don't miss out on all that really cool stuff. Once you've gotten through the stress of gluing up, have a snack, you've earned it. I removed the box from clamps, and as Eric had told us before, my tails were slightly longer than they needed to be. It was no problem. Luckily, that was easy to clean up on the belt sander. Next, I moved over to a tool that I was really familiar with, the orbital sander, to smooth over the surface of the box. So I had a solid box, but no way to get into it. It was time to cut off the lid. I figured we would just cut the entire lid off with the table saw, but Eric was telling me that sometimes that can cause pinching. So it's best to cut most of the way with a table saw and finish with a handsaw. After the lid was parted from the box, you guessed it, more chisel work. Off camera, we had cut and milled some quarter inch thick pieces of maple to use as our box liners. They were easy to miter, drop into place, and hold with some glue.
If you're liking what you see, make sure you hit that thumbs up button down below. Next, I used some water to raise the grain and then sanded everything smooth again. All that was left was finishing. Hi friends, we're here to talk about boxes today. Now yeah, all of us, we should green screen like a newsroom behind us. <laughs> 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 what do you guys say? With your hands up. <laughs> all right. Are you ready? Finish time, baby. Drum roll, please. Since we weren't quite sure what we wanted to put in these boxes, we used a mixture of mineral oil and beeswax so it could be food safe. Applying finish to hardwood is so satisfying. Ready to see how it turned out? I love that the three different boxes turned out so differently. Just like the three of us, we all have our own character. If you look really closely, you'll see that Eric's box is extra fancy and has miter dovetails. You see that gorgeous continuous grain on the walnut? That's Sam's box, so make sure to go to her channel to check out her whole build process. Looking back at the photos of our projects, it made me realize my final tip that I wanted to share. Don't be afraid to learn from your friends. If you have talented people in your life, ask them for help. Ask them to show you what they know. We're makers, we're good at making things. And I discovered by hand cutting dovetails that one of the most important things to make are friends. If you wanna see some of the other projects I've collaborated on, check out this video. And this one as well. Don't be scared to try something new. And as always, thanks for watching, guys.